Well, tonight the Gonzaga Bulldogs made it a bit interesting in the end, but overall they cruised to an 81 to 71 win over USF tonight in the WCC semifinals. Brennan Green and Travis Green joining us live from Las Vegas tonight to go over a contest that was owned by the Gonzaga Bigs. Good evening, guys. Yeah, Mark, this uh, earlier this week, Drew Timmy said that he expected this team to come out hungry and uh, nobody wanted to eat more tonight than him. <laughs> That's for sure, Drew. I've seen we've seen a couple times this season where he's just in a zone and you can see it from the get go. Tonight was one of those nights. Unfortunately, Drew got into some foul trouble. I think he could have put up around 40 points this game if that didn't happen. Yeah, he only had 22 guys. <laughs> Just 22, God. that's all. Uh, Drew actually scored the team's first six points of this game. He was 9 of 13 from the field, but it wasn't just Drew. All of the Gonzaga bigs were feasting tonight as Drew, Chet Holmgren, and Anton Watson had Gonzaga's first 18 points and finished with 46 points overall as a group. Watson also almost had a double-double with 8 points and 10 boards. Holmgren was close as well with 17 points and 8 boards. Here's a stat to blow your mind. Gonzaga had 52 points in the paint to USF's 18. I don't need to say wow. much more than that. <laughs> Drew Timmy, well, this was just a normal night for him. He talked about that post game. Mark Few also talked about Anton Watson's play. It's just what we do. That's just Zag basketball, and uh, we got away from it a little bit, and we just focused on that this week uh, prior to this, and uh, we just got back to doing what we do best, and that's the bottom line. It, it was good to get Anton back. He's He's played uh, numerous games like that. I talked to him um, earlier today. We had a little chat just about getting back to, you know, when he gets in, changing the game and making plays and being assertive. I think over the course of the last three games, he hasn't been that and uh, struggled. Uh, but prior to that, I, I, he's been such a lift. All right, so naturally, the next question that comes into any Gonzaga fan's mind is, Who's up next? Well, we have that answer for you now, and it will be a redemption game of sorts for the Bulldogs, a rematch of the Zags' only loss in WCC play just a little over a week ago. You'll remember this one. 17th ranked St. Mary's in the championship after beating Santa Clara just a bit ago in a game that actually was, was pretty, pretty wild. That, yeah. This one came down to the wire. Uh, Santa Clara gave them a run for their money. Now, before that game was played, Drew Timmy was asked the question of, who would he like to play in the championship? Let's put it this way. He wasn't too thrilled about being asked that. Make sure to play close attention to him after the question is answered. I know the politically correct response to this question is, we don't care whom we play, but the fact that you lost to St. Mary's a week and a half ago, would you prefer to play St. Mary's tomorrow night? It doesn't matter. Both teams are hard. They're both well-coached teams. Whoever happens when we'll have to get ready for and it'll be a challenge no matter what. Same, same thing. First of all, <laughs> dying. Yeah. Uh, we were <laughs> laughing in the media room so hard about this, to be honest <laughs> with you. I don't blame Drew for being a little bit annoyed oh, no. because, first of all, it was kind of a weirdly worded question. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe a bit of a baiting question. And also, it was the second question of the <sighs> press conference, a little bit early, to be asking yeah. about St. Mary's. So let's get through uh, this game that we just uh, finished. That first. we just finished. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of what you would call a trap question mm -hmm. in, in the biz, guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Drew, obviously he wasn't very happy after the game in general I think mm -hmm. that comes down to uh, first off him getting into foul trouble but also the fact that the Zags they really almost gave up this game I mean you look at the final double digits but they didn't play well down the stretch and let USF back into this game yeah totally it was uh, I, I definitely think that Drew had some things yes to say to his teammates post game <laughs> to put it that way uh, Gonzaga and St. Mary's though it's still on, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, 6 o'clock tomorrow on ESPN. What also is yeah. still on, the Gonzaga women, they <laughs> rolled on today winning their game against USF 69-55. to How they won this game, it all started with a jumper at the end of the third quarter that really sparked mm -hmm. everything 
for the Zags. Kalen Trong, by the way, an absolute re revelation today. 18 points off the bench for Gonzaga. She led all the scores. That's the jumper right there that she sit at the end of the third. Then WCC Sixth Woman of the Year, Yvonne Ejim, who was the Zags' second leading scorer, also off the bench, hit a layup just 10 seconds into the quarter. Fourth quarter, Gonzaga would widen their lead with Kaylin's sister, Kaylee, hitting another jumper. The sisters seemed to like those. Finally, Abby Connor capped off the 9-0 run with a three to put the Zags up by 12. They would never look back, went on to win this one 69-55. Like I said, this win was huge in terms of keeping the Gonzaga women in the NCAA tournament field as an at-large bid. And Lisa Fortier is uh, definitely aware. I do know how to read, and people do send me a lot of messages and and I, you know so I, I know what the situation is um, we are just trying to control our own destiny at this time we always are when we get here uh, we schedule for an at-large bid and then we try to come here and win the tournament and um, certainly we're one step closer to uh, achieving that next goal some less sexy, but uh, still very important stats from that game. Gonzaga 17 of 18 yeah. from the free throw line. Absolutely huge in yeah. that one. And they also out-rebounded USF 49 to 35. That's a pretty wide margin in the paint yeah. there. So we will see if they are finally able to get BYU's number tomorrow. <laughs> it hasn't been so easy for them so far. Yeah, it has season. not. As Brenna just alluded to, the Gonzaga's 0-2 against BYU, and both those losses – they were double digits, some yeah, bad losses. So round three of these two, the difference between the men, obviously, they have not beaten them yet. So that game, championship game, both Gonzaga men and the women looking to win the WCC title. That game's at 1 p.m. tomorrow. You can catch it on ESPNU. The women's game the at women's 1 o'clock tomorrow. The men's game men's at game 6, six on ESPN. Yep. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Reporting in Las Vegas, he's Travis Green. I'm Brennan Green, Chrome 2 Sports.